Ground penetrating radar GPR, is a geophysical method that uses radar pulses to image the subsurface. This non-destructive method uses electromagnetic radiation in the microwave band UHF, VHF frequencies of the radio spectrum, and detects the reflected signals from subsurface structures. GPR can have applications in a variety of media, including rock, soil, ice, fresh water, pavements and structures. In the right conditions, practitioners can use GPR to detect subsurface objects, changes in material properties, and voids and cracks. GPR uses high frequency, usually polarized radio waves, usually in the range 10 MHz to 2.6 GHz. A GPR transmitter and antenna emits electromagnetic energy into the ground. When the energy encounters a buried object or a boundary between materials having different permittivities, it may be reflected or refracted or scattered back to the surface. A receiving antenna can then record the variations in the return signal. The principles involved are similar to seismology, except GPR methods implement electromagnetic energy rather than acoustic energy, and energy may be reflected at boundaries where subsurface electrical properties change rather than subsurface mechanical properties as is the case with seismic energy. The electrical conductivity of the ground, the transmitted center frequency, and the radiated power all may limit the effective depth range of GPR investigation. Increases in electrical conductivity attenuate the introduced electromagnetic wave, and thus the penetration depth decreases. Because of frequency-dependent attenuation mechanisms, higher frequencies do not penetrate as far as lower frequencies. However, higher frequencies may provide improved resolution. Thus operating frequency is always a trade-off between resolution and penetration. Optimal depth of subsurface penetration is achieved in ice where the depth of penetration can achieve several thousand meters to bedrock in Greenland at low GPR frequencies. Dry sandy soils or massive dry materials such as granite, limestone, and concrete tend to be resistive rather than conductive, and the depth of penetration could be up to 15 meters 49 feet. However, in moist or clay-laden soils and materials with high electrical conductivity, penetration may be as little as a few centimeters. Ground penetrating radar antennas are generally in contact with the ground for the strongest signal strength, however, GPR air launched antennas can be used above the ground. Cross borehole GPR has developed within the field of hydrogeophysics to be a valuable means of assessing the presence and amount of soil water. Topic. History The first patent for a system designed to use continuous wave radar to locate buried objects was submitted by Gotthelf Leimbach and Heinrich Lowy in 1910, six years after the first patent for radar itself patent de 237944. A patent for a system using radar pulses rather than a continuous wave was filed in 1926 by Dr. Hulsenbeck de 489,434, leading to improved depth resolution. A glacier's depth was measured using ground penetrating radar in 1929 by W. Stern. Further developments in the field remained sparse until the 1970s, when military applications began driving research. Commercial applications followed and the first affordable consumer equipment was sold in 1975. Topic. Applications GPR has many applications in a number of fields. In the earth sciences it is used to study bedrock, soils, groundwater, and ice. It is of some utility in prospecting for gold nuggets and for diamonds in alluvial gravel beds, by finding natural traps in buried stream beds that have the potential for accumulating heavier particles. The Chinese lunar rover Yutu has a GPR on its underside to investigate the soil and crust of the moon. 
Engineering applications include non-destructive testing NDT of structures and pavements, locating buried structures and utility lines, and studying soils and bedrock. In environmental remediation, GPR is used to define landfills, contaminant plumes, and other remediation sites, while in archaeology it is used for mapping archaeological features and cemeteries. GPR is used in law enforcement for locating clandestine graves and buried evidence. Military uses include detection of mines, unexploded ordnance, and tunnels. Borehole radars utilizing GPR are used to map the structures from a borehole in underground mining applications. Modern directional borehole radar systems are able to produce three-dimensional images from measurements in a single borehole. One of the other main applications for ground-penetrating radars is for locating underground utilities. Standard electromagnetic induction utility locating tools require utilities to be conductive. These tools are ineffective for locating plastic conduits or concrete storm and sanitary sewers. Since GPR detects variations in dielectric properties in the subsurface, it can be highly effective for locating non-conductive utilities. GPR was often used on the Channel 4 television program Time Team which used the technology to determine a suitable area for examination by means of excavations. In 1992 GPR was used to recover £150,000 in cash that kidnapper Michael Sams received as a ransom for an estate agent he had kidnapped after Sams buried the money in a field. <laughs> Archaeology Ground penetrating radar survey is one method used in archaeological geophysics. GPR can be used to detect and map subsurface archaeological artifacts, features, and patterning. The concept of radar is familiar to most people. With ground penetrating radar, the radar signal, an electromagnetic pulse, is directed into the ground. It is important to not get GPR surveys confused with electromagnetic surveys. A recent survey of an Iron Age Hilford in Hampshire recently revealed the discrepancies between magnetometry, M, and GPR surveys over the same area. Subsurface objects and stratigraphy layering will cause reflections that are picked up by a receiver. The travel time of the reflected signal indicates the depth. Data may be plotted as profiles, as plan view maps isolating specific depths, or as three-dimensional models. GPR can be a powerful tool in favorable conditions uniform sandy soils are ideal. Like other geophysical methods used in archaeology and unlike excavation, it can locate artifacts and map features without any risk of damaging them. Among methods used in archaeological geophysics it is unique both in its ability to detect some small objects at relatively great depths, and in its ability to distinguish the depth of anomaly sources. The principal disadvantage of GPR is that it is severely limited by less than ideal environmental conditions. Fine-grained sediments clays and silts are often problematic because their high electrical conductivity causes loss of signal strength. Rocky or heterogeneous sediments scatter the GPR signal, weakening the useful signal while increasing extraneous noise. In the field of cultural heritage GPR with high-frequency antenna is also used for investigating historical masonry structures, detecting cracks and decay patterns of columns and detachment of frescoes. Topic. Military Military applications of ground-penetrating radar include detection of unexploded ordnance and detecting tunnels. In military applications and other common GPR applications, practitioners often use GPR in conjunction with other available geophysical techniques such as electrical resistivity and electromagnetic induction methods. Topic. Vehicle localization 
A recent novel approach to vehicle localization using prior map-based images from ground-penetrating radar has been demonstrated. Termed, localizing ground-penetrating radar. LGPR, centimeter level accuracies at speeds up to 60 miles per hour have been demonstrated. Closed loop operation was first demonstrated in 2012 for autonomous vehicle steering and fielded for military operation in 2013. Highway speed centimeter level localization during a nighttime snowstorm was demonstrated in 2016. Topic: Three-dimensional imaging. Individual lines of GPR data represent a sectional profile view of the subsurface. Multiple lines of data systematically collected over an area may be used to construct three-dimensional or tomographic images. Data may be presented as three-dimensional blocks or as horizontal or vertical slices. Horizontal slices known as depth slices or time slices are essentially plan view maps isolating specific depths. Time slicing has become standard practice in archaeological applications because horizontal patterning is often the most important indicator of cultural activities. Topic: Limitations. The most significant performance limitation of GPR is in high conductivity materials such as clay soils and soils that are salt contaminated. Performance is also limited by signal scattering in heterogeneous conditions e.g. rocky soils. Other disadvantages of currently available GPR systems include Interpretation of radargrams is generally non-intuitive to the novice. Considerable expertise is necessary to effectively design, conduct, and interpret GPR surveys. Relatively high energy consumption can be problematic for extensive field surveys. Radar is sensitive to changes in material composition. Detecting changes requires movement. When looking through stationary items using surface penetrating or ground penetrating radar, the equipment needs to be moved in order for the radar to examine the specified area by looking for differences in material composition. While it can identify items such as pipes, voids, and soil, it cannot identify the specific materials, such as gold and precious gems. It can however, be useful in providing subsurface mapping of potential gem-bearing pockets, or bugs. The readings can be confused by moisture in the ground, and they can't separate gem-bearing pockets from the non-gem-bearing ones. When determining depth capabilities, the frequency range of the antenna dictates the size of the antenna and the depth capability. The grid spacing which is scanned is based on the size of the targets that need to be identified and the results required. Typical grid spacings can be 1 meter, 3 feet, 5 feet, 10 feet, 20 feet for ground surveys, and for walls and floors 1 inch 1 ft. The speed at which a radar signal travels is dependent upon the composition of the material being penetrated. The depth to a target is determined based on the amount of time it takes for the radar signal to reflect back to the unit's antenna. Radar signals travel at different velocities through different types of materials. It is possible to use the depth to a known object to determine a specific velocity and then calibrate the depth calculations. Topic: Power regulation. In 2005, the European Telecommunications Standards Institute introduced legislation to regulate GPR equipment and GPR operators to control excess emissions of electromagnetic radiation. The European GPR Association Euro -GPR, was formed as a trade association to represent and protect the legitimate use of GPR in Europe. Topic. Similar technologies 
Ground penetrating radar uses a variety of technologies to generate the radar signal. These are impulse, stepped frequency, frequency modulated continuous wave FMCW, and noise. Systems on the market in 2009 also use digital signal processing DSP to process the data during survey work rather than offline. A special kind of GPR uses unmodulated continuous wave signals. This holographic subsurface radar differs from other GPR types in that it records plan view subsurface holograms. Depth penetration of this kind of radar is rather small 20 to 30 centimeters, but lateral resolution is enough to discriminate different types of landmines in the soil, or cavities, defects, bugging devices, or other hidden objects in walls, floors, and structural elements. GPR is used on vehicles for close in high-speed road survey and landmine detection as well as in standoff mode, in-pipe penetrating radar IPPR, and in sewer GPR IS SGPR are applications of GPR technologies applied in non-metallic pipes where the signals are directed through pipe and conduit walls to detect pipe wall thickness and voids behind the pipe walls. Wall penetrating radar can read through non-metallic structures as demonstrated to ASIO and Australian police in 1984 while surveying an ex-Russian embassy in Canberra showed police how to watch people up to two rooms away laterally and through floors vertically, could see metal lumps that might be weapons. GPR can even act as a motion sensor for military guards and police. Project carried out first in 1984 Canberra, Australia, also used for detecting ghosts on TV show. Air disturbance in a locked room. The Mindseeker Project seeks to design a system to determine whether landmines are present in areas using ultra-wideband synthetic aperture radar units mounted on blimps. 